Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway. Today I'm going to be unboxing a pretty large Hornby Digital train set. First things first though, a massive thank you to Hornby for loaning me today's train set. I really appreciate the support there, Hornby. I should say that I haven't been paid a penny to review this one and I will be sending it back to them when I finished. The train set then, are you ready? It is this, the Hornby Mixed Traffic train set. It is quite a large train set and I think it's the first train set I've ever reviewed that contains more than one loco. As you can see from the front of the box there, we have two engines in here, which is pretty cool. Now, the RRP is quite high for this, it's £209.99 and you can head over to hornby.com and find those available there. As always, if you'd rather use the retailers, it is a little bit cheaper there. I think Hattons have these for £189 something, it's probably just £189 and there's a link below, an affiliate link if you want to check that out. Now, obviously, that sounds like quite a lot of money, over £200 or close to £200, depending on the price you pick, is a lot for a train set. However, I've been thinking about this, and I think given everything you get inside here, the value for money there is absolutely amazing. And I'm going to try and prove that to you by adding up the costs of all the individual sort of products in the train set, and then comparing them to the price of the actual train set. And I think the result there might impress you, so stay tuned for that. First things first though, let's get this open and find out exactly what this one is like. Okay, let's do it. So, right at the start I mentioned this is a digital train set, and you can see here that this does include Hornby's digital controller, that is the DCC Select, and essentially, among other advantages, these controllers allow you to run multiple locomotives at once. In fact, there it says you can program up to 59 locomotives there, which is really, really cool. Obviously, you can't run 59 at once because the power supply would blow up, but it is capable of controlling that many with sufficient power. Now, it does say that we can see the reverse for more details, so I I will do that. Okay, so yeah, you can see mainly we have some options here for expanding the layout. And then over here on the right hand side, you have more on the DCC Select. If you're not familiar with the controllers, feel free to pause it and read it. Um, but I will assume that most of you are somewhat familiar, although I will show you how to operate them later on. Okay, so let's get to itemizing what we actually get inside this train set and figuring out whether the price of £209.99 is in fact reasonable. So first of all, here you can see what we get. We have the actual DCC Select controller, which happens to have for sale for £98, so that in itself is quite an expensive piece of equipment. You can see we have a third radius circuit of track there, which generally costs around £20 if you were to buy the track pieces uh, individually, again from Hattons. We have what appears to be the extension pack A, which costs £18, that has a set of points and a curve and a few straight tracks. Pretty good stuff for a train set. We also have the re-railer. I'm not sure if you can buy that separately, but I would generally expect those to cost about four quid at a guess. Then we have the two locos. We have the 2721 pannier tank and the Hornby Class 08 shunter. Both of those tend to sell for around £25 each, although of course they do include DCC decoders. They have actual chips inside them. Uh, I think they're six pin decoders, which are quite expensive. They cost £23.50, I believe, which adds £47 to the total. Then we have the four wagons here, as you can see. Generally, they cost somewhere between £7 and £9.50 each. Uh, so I've been quite generous there and just called it £25. I expect if you were actually buying them new, it would cost more than that. It's also not 100% clear whether this lot comes with a track mat. If it does, you can add a few more pounds to it still. So there we have, we have a total price of over £260 there, £261.80, which makes the RRP of £209.99 suddenly seem incredibly reasonable indeed. And of course, the Hatton's price of £189 is way, way better. That's over £70 below what you'd expect to pay for this. So if you're planning to get into DCC and you want to get the controller and a bit of track and more than one loco, this is the by far the cheapest way to do it. Assuming, of course, the locos that come with the set are the locos that you want, I suppose that's a bit of a compromise, isn't it? Anyway, enough waffling. Shall we get this out and find out what we get inside? I think we should. Okay, let's open up this end then. Uh, I've not opened this box yet, so I will be interested to see how they've managed to cram so much inside. Right, here we go. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's in one of those egg boxes, folks. <laughs> but that's fine, because I think the locos inside are sort of pretty basic Hornby Railroad locos, which aren't that fragile, more or less. 
Okay, so as you can see, we do have track in here. I'm not going to go into too much detail with the track because I always do and it's a bit samey, isn't it? I will just show you some of the elements that are a little bit different to usual, being that this is a DCC train set. Uh, the first thing you can see is here, we do have a DCC point. You can't see it that well because it's all packaged up at the moment. But the point has some clips fitted, which means that all three tracks leading to and from the point are live when connected to the power supply, which is good on DCC. There's obviously no reason to isolate it. You can control all your locos separately anyway and you also have the power track here with the green top i believe that is exactly the same as the power track from hornby's dc train sets it just doesn't have the parallel capacitor in there because supposedly that's not necessary with dcc besides that all of the other track pieces should be exactly the same so i will put those out of the way you can see we do get a fair amount of track with this train set okay let's do the boring part first then because we do have the re-railer here i have looked at these before but it's quite a handy tool if you're just getting started because it does mean that you can put your locos and rolling stock on the track really easily and that is quite a difficult thing to do particularly for younger people so i think that's quite a handy inclusion and then of course we do have the hornby dcc select controller uh, which are generally speaking quite nicely made for the price and we'll get that out and give that a test a little bit later on of course you also get the power line so this is the cable that connects your track to your controller it's pretty standard stuff i'm pretty sure you didn't need me to tell you what that was but that's what it is anyway then we have the power supply here, as you can see, what is this one? So this is a 15 volt, one amp, which should allow you to run at least three, possibly four locomotives on it at the same time, which isn't bad at all. Uh, in here, we also have the buffer stop, which is pretty cool. That goes at the end of the siding and just make sure your engines don't go sailing off the end of the track. That wouldn't be very realistic, would it? Okay, let's look at the locos then, shall we? So we have this, which I really like already. So this is the 2721 pannier tank. It's quite an old model, I believe. I think this is derived from the 1980 model. When did this first come out? I think it was 1980. So yeah, you're not expecting a super detailed model with this, and it certainly isn't, just looking at it. But it looks fine, doesn't it? It's got a lot of character, and it's it has the charm that the pannier tanks did. And I do love the sort of open cab on this, as much as the crews in real life surely didn't. We'll take a closer look at that in just a second then we have a completely different locomotive of course this is a diesel it's a class 08 shunter now i believe this is derived from a much much older loco although as we're going to see later on the decoration on this is considerably better than it was back in the 1960s but either way for the price i mean if you assume this thing costs around 25 quid without the decoder yeah it's not too bad if you want a super detailed 08 i mean with the proper wheels for example you can see the wheel set does not look like the 08 wheel sets do in real life if you want a better 08 such things are available hornby have done a more detailed but obviously more expensive 08 if that's something you want so bear in mind it is basic stuff but for the money it is absolutely fine obviously if you're a serious modeler uh, do consider whether or not this is something you want but uh, yeah it will be interesting to see how this runs of course the two locos there do run on the same chassis with the same motor uh, i think it's the same chassis it's a similar chassis we'll say that just to be sure but i'm, I'm pretty sure they are the same okay let's take a look at some of the wagons then and these are going to be interesting to look at uh, what sort of features are they going to have Okay, so this is W.R. Davis Company. This is actually a beautiful wagon. It's got metal wheels. That's really good. Uh, railroad wagons don't tend to have metal wheels, but these do. It doesn't have the interchangeable NEM couplings. The couplings are fixed part of the body, which is a little bit of a shame. However, that does appear to be consistent with the locomotives, which is good. Sometimes Hornby train sets have all sorts of different couplings on them, which is a little bit inconsistent, <laughs> which isn't great to see. But yeah, these do all seem to have the same ones. I'm hoping I won't be proved wrong there uh, this one does have slightly different ones actually having said that but it's fine okay so this looks like a midland region box fan which is absolutely lovely again it's got metal wheels it does have the slightly different coupling attachment uh, it has the old sort of airfix style coupling which i've just broken <laughs> hang on yeah, it's all right. They do. They're supposed to come apart. Uh, so yeah, it's slightly different, but they are the same large D-style tension locks. So that's fine. Yeah, that actually looks beautiful, doesn't it? In that grey, really, really like the look of that. For the money, the rolling stock here isn't too bad. I was thinking it might have been nice to have an extra couple of wagons to do a bit more shunting, but I would say four wagons isn't too bad. And wow, this one looks really, really lovely. Look at that. Iron ore tipper. Oh, tippler, it says. Tippler? Is that a is that a typo? Is it supposed to say tippler? 
yeah, to have a tipple means to have alcohol in this country. <laughs> Not sure if that was the intention. But yeah, the decoration on there looks really, really good, actually. It's a different wagon to the first one I opened up. It's not the same model, but it does have the same metal wheels and the same couplings on. Yeah, that is fine. That is really nice. That is more, that is beyond just a basic railroad wagon, which, as I say, for the price, is pretty good indeed. And then this looks like a tanker. Let's have a look at this. I don't think this is a tanker I've ever had before. Uh, I've obviously owned lots of similar ones that are the same model, but this one's not one I recognize. Acme, kerosene. Yeah, that's fair enough. Again, we've got nice metal wheels, lots of painted details. Look, the axle boxes are picked out, lots of decoration on the actual tank itself, separately fitted ladder, and the similar sort of coupling, the large D tension lock. Yeah, that is not bad at all, not bad at all. And I believe there's some gubbins underneath here as well. Ah, yes. So we do have a track mat as well. I tell you what, for the money, presuming it all works right, and normally with Hornby sets they do, <laughs> hopefully I won't have to eat my words later on, but considering what you get, the value sounds great, doesn't it? Okay, so I don't think I will open this because normally it just fills the screen and it takes me 10 minutes to get it folded up right again. But we do have a track mat, which is fantastic. It's a good barrier, of course, between the carpet and all the dust or lint or pet hair that might be on it. So that's good. I really do like when Hornby include the uh, track mats. Let's grab some of the operation and maintenance guides then. So these are for locomotives with the Type M motor. Ah, the dreaded Type M. I'm sure it's fine. On DCC motor controls, it should be a little bit better, shouldn't it? So there we go. Yep, you can see, oh, is this, a, I think that is a four pin decoder. It's not a six pin. So maybe my price was wrong for that very slightly, uh, but only by fiver or so. But yep, you can see how the locos go together there. It is indeed the standard 060 railroad mechanism, which is just fine. It's quite reliable and pretty good. There's proper bearings and all that sort of stuff on it. Not bad for the money. Then we have the DCC select manual or something. Uh, oh, it's version 1.6 new features. I will have to have a look at that then before I talk more about the controller uh, to see if there's any new features that I'm not familiar with. That's pretty good. Then we have, oh, here we go. Yeah, the R8249 slash R7150 Hornby DCC decoders. So that's what you need to look at if you want to know more about programming them and installing them and such. Although, of course, they are pre-installed into the locos with this train set. Bit about warranty, a bit about owner's manual. I've looked at those before. And then there's some other guff, uh, including, well, I suppose this is less guff, we have a really nice manual for the DCC Select controller, uh, which is pretty good. Yeah, that covers all bases. So if you don't know how to use them, if you don't know how to sort of reprogram decoders and that sort of thing, this will definitely help you to do that. Although I will show you how to do that because it's dead easy. Okay, brilliant. So let's take a close look at some of the locos then, or both of the locos. I won't show you the rolling stock up close because I think you've seen it all before, but the locos I will show you briefly because uh, I think I ought to give you a good idea of what sort of detail we're dealing with with these, but they're not too bad as you can see. Right, I'm excited now. I can't wait to get all this going. Let's give this a try then. Let me show you the 2721 up close. Okay, so there it is then, the 2721 pannier tank, up close and personal for you. And I think this is really lovely, actually. It's obviously a very, very basic model. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's not super detailed in any way. It is very much a railroad loco. But I think given that it only accounts for around £25 in the whole cost of the train set, I don't think it's too bad at all. Obviously, the decoder costs a little bit more than that. But generally speaking, I think for what you pay, this is absolutely fine. It's not a terribly heavy model. This weighs in at 150 grams, and the 08 weighs exactly the same, quite interestingly, which certainly isn't criminally light, but it's not terribly heavy either. Obviously, the running plate on this loco is just made of plastic, given how basic it is. We do have a metal chassis, and that's where a lot of the weight comes from. It is heavier than a few 060s I've reviewed before. The Barracaldo saddle tank is a little bit lighter than this but generally speaking it is a little bit on the light side for 060s so yeah as I've said it's a very basic model however some of that is mitigated by the decoration which seems to be really good so we've got the Great Western logo on the side of the tanks there which doesn't seem to have been too simplified which is really good and then on the side of the tank we've also got the running number nicely printed onto the plate there which is really good the buffer beams are quite nicely detailed as well. There's a lot of riveted detail going on with those, and there's also the running numbers applied there. 
There are one or two nice features as well, such as the metal whistles fitted to the top of the cab. That is a nice feature to see, isn't it? And also the tip of the chimney is also made of metal. Unfortunately, it's had this sort of satin paint put onto it, which sort of takes away some of the glossiness of it. But the fact that it's metal ought to count for something and the buffers look great as well. They're not sprung or anything like that, but they do have that lovely high shine to them, which is pretty cool. Some of the handrails are separately fitted as well. The ones that go all the way around the tank and past the smoke box door, yeah, those are separately fitted, which is pretty cool. The rest of the handrails are just painted on though, as you can see, um, yeah, not 100% fantastic. And we do have some pretty basic features such as moulded pipe work. We also have no painted cab detail. We have an unrealistically raised cab floor, it looks like, not 100% realistic that. All of the lamp brackets are moulded on. The coal is a little bit chunky, although that is removable, I believe. And we don't have any glazed windows on the cab or anything like that. We do actually have covered axles though, <laughs> even some of Helgen's 160 pound locos don't have covered axles, but on this one you can see they have been painted over which is really really good. So yeah, it is a basic model, but is it reasonable for the money? Yeah, I think so. Generally you can pick these up for about 25 pounds and for that money they're absolutely fine. Okay, let's take a look at the 08 shall we? So where the Pannier dated back 40 years, this model actually originated long before that. I should say though that the decoration is way more advanced than it was back in the 1960s. If I show you an early 1960s version, you can see that the model looks a lot more basic just because of the decoration. Although looking really closely, you can see that some of the details are a bit different. So perhaps the railroad version was tooled a little bit later than the early 60s. But as you can see, the level of detail is certainly roughly similar, isn't it? So yeah, this one is basic. I'll talk about the decoration first though. Obviously we've got the BR logo there and some running numbers and such printed onto the side of the cab. The handrails have also been painted as well, which makes them stand out a bit. Although I'm pretty sure, yeah, they are certainly just molded. We have some little warning signs on the roof, which is really, really nice. It's great to see that, nice and realistic. And the wasp stripes on the front and back are done really, really well. You can see though around the cab we don't have any glazed windows which is a little bit of a shame. There is certainly no cab detail either. In fact you can see the decoder inside the cab uh, which is fair enough as I say for the price but uh, something to note. It's not very convincing as an 08 shunter though is it? Obviously the wheels on the real 08s did not look like this at all. The coupling rods were on the outside for example and the wheels were more hidden away from view. Uh, the reason for that is because back in the Triang days, back in the 1960s, they tried to reuse the same chassis as often as possible and so this had the same chassis as the Jinties, as some of the Johnson 060s. The chassis was reused quite heavily and in those days the realism didn't matter too much obviously. We do still have the separately fitted buffers, I'm not sure if those are plastic or metal, but they do look halfway realistic, don't they? And at least some of the moulded details look halfway convincing. Yeah, it's not terrible, is it? And certainly from any sort of distance, it does look the part. I do like the sort of red coupling rods, they look good, don't they? So there we are, two locos, very, very basic, but certainly worth the money, I would say. Now, I'm going to set up the layout. I'm not going to go through the whole process of setting it up because I seem to do it every time I review a train set. So if you want to see more detail, check out any of my other train set videos. I'll put one up in the top corner now. I'll just do a quick time lapse, put it all together, set up the DCC controller, show you how to use that and give it everything a little try, shall we? Okay, back with you in just a sec. And I think the job is a good one. Doing that just reminded me how good the Hornby train sets are, particularly compared with that Backman one I did a little while ago. So the track is nickel silver track, which means it won't rust or anything like that. The fish plates are super duper tight, so the track does not come apart once it's been put together. Massive thumbs up for that. The curves are really wide, third radius curves. They needn't be that wide for the locos that come in the set but that means that you can buy bigger locomotives and run them on this track no problem if you decide to expand. And of course you've got the siding with the set of points which adds so much play value. I always recommend that people buy train sets with a set of points, uh, which is fantastic. So the DCC Selects is set up here, ready to run. I'm gonna try some locos in just a second, but first of course we need to program them. By default, the loco numbers are number three on the controller. So if you put them both on the track to start with, you wouldn't have independent control of them because they're both set to number three. 
To reprogram them is really, really simple. First things first, you make sure that the loco you want to program is the only loco on the track. This won't work if both locos are on, uh, so definitely make sure that's the case. Then all you do is hold down the select button, you choose the number you're going to put in. I want this one to be 08 because it's an 08 shunter. Then you push select and the red light will flash for a bit and then it is done. So then you can take that off. I will put the uh, pannier tank on. This is a 2721, so I'm going to program this one to 27, I think. So hold down select. I'll put in the number 27, push the select button. The same thing will happen. The decoder will get its new number. And hopefully that loco now will be set to number 27. The only thing to do then is to give these locos a try and see if they actually work. So mechanically speaking, to say how basic and cheap these locos are, they're certainly not bad. On the downside, they do just have the three pole motor inside the Type M, which obviously isn't the best and most reliable motor in the world. But generally speaking, in locos this size at least, they tend to do their job. They have proper bearings on the wheel set. They also have all wheel pickup and no traction tires. They have not been fitted with rubber tires. This model originally used to have them, uh, but they don't anymore from Hornby, which is really, really good. Okay, well, let's give the slow speed a bit of a try. This one is all programmed and ready to go. So I'll set the direction and give us a little juice and see what happens. There we go. And as you can see, straight out of the box, that is not absolutely terrible. It has cut out because this has not been running yet. And so any interruption will mess it up. You just have to give it a little bit of a nudge and give it some more power again. And as you can see, that is fine. So we'll try the crawl a little bit more in a minute. Um, but yeah, we do seem to have a fair bit of cutting out. Uh, let's give this a bit more speed going forwards and back. You'll notice it does accelerate and decelerate nice and gently, which is good. Uh, hopefully the reliability will get a little bit better as it goes. There we go. <laughs> but out of the box, you can see that the thing does work, which is pretty good. And we'll get them running together in just a second. But for now, that is the 2721 pannier tank. There we go. Let's see if the 08 performs similarly then. It pretty much should do. Okay, so yeah, the mechanism is pretty much identical with this one. To get this to work, I do need to type in the 08 number that I programmed and then press select. Now we're controlling this loco. Let's set the direction again then and give this a little bit of power. Oh yeah, as you can see, it runs very much similarly. Let's try that again. Should we try a crawl just so that we can see what it does straight out of the box? Although, as I say, it's probably going to cut out because this is brand new. Any slower? Tell you what, straight out of the box, I don't know why this would be, but the 08 seems to be better than the Pannier. Look at that. That is actually pretty amazing slow speed. Any slower? Oh, that seems to be the lowest speed these can do. And amazing is that. Yeah, they, do, they literally do have the same mechanism. I'm pretty sure they do. It might be a slightly different chassis, but there shouldn't be a lot different. But that is considerably better, isn't it? Forwards. Yeah, that's really not bad at all, is it? A bit faster. I love the way that the decoders have the acceleration and deceleration built into them. It's so cool. Look at that. There we go. So what I will do now is I'll put them both onto the track and show you how we can run two locos independently. All right, so as you can see, both locos are now on the same track, and this is really where DCC most differs from DC, because I'm now going to control the two locos independently. So I've got 08 selected on the controller. As you can see, when I alter the speed, only the 08 responds. And what I can do is if I give the 08 a little bit of speed on its own, not too fast, I can then change to 27 and I can control this loco separately if it's going to work. <laughs> so as you can see, the direction, the speed is all entirely independent. This one really does need running in because out of the box, it's a bit pants, isn't it? But even though I'm doing all of this with the pannier tank, the 08 is still going on on its merry way, which is really, really cool. And of course, you don't have to stop at two locos. You can do three or four on the power supply that's included, which is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these two coupled together, set them to the same speed and let them run in. So as you can see, I've got one going forwards, the other one going backwards. The direction does not matter. And because they've got the same mechanism, effectively the same chassis on the inside, they're running at about the same speed. They're both going at half speed there. 
So I'll leave those to run for probably half an hour. Well, let's go for 20 minutes in each direction, just in the interests of time. And then we'll move on, put the rolling stock on, try the sidings and such, and see how all that goes. So far though, provided that pannier tank starts running a bit better after it's been run in, so far it's looking really, really good. And I can definitely see this being a lot of fun to use. Being able to control your loco separately, multiple loco separately on the same track is a massive advantage to my mind. And that opens up a lot of possibilities for the different things you can do, particularly with that siding there. That is gonna be a lot of fun to shunt with. So I'll see you in just a second. Okay, running in has concluded and both locos passed it absolutely fine. They've gotten a little bit quieter and they are a little bit smoother now as a result of that. As you can see, I've split them apart so that they're now going to be individual again. So let's try the pannier again. Let's see if it can do that crawl a little bit better now without cutting out all the time. Oh yeah, it seems a bit better, doesn't it? Go a bit faster. So yeah, they are noisy for some reason. They're certainly not quiet runners, but I must say they're generally quite smooth. And that's not bad, is it? That's not bad. That is going along quite nicely without cutting out now. Okay, let's try that crawl then. Let's go as slow as we possibly can. Woo. Yeah, that's definitely as good as the 08, isn't it now? That's very, very good and slow. The 08 was pretty good from the start, wasn't it? But we will try that one just to make sure it is still good. Yeah, I, I still think that's the stronger runner. That one sounds a bit more healthy, but they're both very good, aren't they? So the performance is strong. If they're a little bit quieter and a bit more reliable, I would have given those a five, I think, on performance. Anyway, let's put the wagons on the track and do a bit of a shunting test, shall we? Okay, so I've split the wagons into two lots and I'm going to show you just how much fun the shunting can be with this train set. So my aim is going to be to pretend that the circuit is not a circuit. I'm going to pretend this is just a straight section of track. And my aim is to put the entire train together for the 2721 pannier tank for it to pull. So the 08 is going to come in first. Where is the 08? Here it comes. That's going to push the two wagons that it comes to first into the siding. So first it's going to go and couple to those which is really nice and easy to do with the DCC. So let's do that, nice gentle coupling. There we go, and it's gonna push those wagons into the siding, which is nice and easy. There we go. And I'm gonna shut the points, and watch this. Once the points are shut, on DC operation, without DCC points, the 08 would now be dead, you couldn't control it. But I still can, as you can see, so I can push the wagons up to the buffer stop with those. Now I can get the 2721 class to come forwards and couple to those other wagons. So let's send the pannier to do that. Keep it steady. Okay. Nice gentle coupling. Perfect. Now I'm going to uncouple the 08 and open the points. There we go. And I can now set the 08 to go backwards, paying attention to the direction and get that out of the siding. There we go. And now I can shut the points and the 08 can go away now about its business. The 2721 can come out again, backwards. The 08 is still running, by the way, I haven't stopped that. I can control the pannier completely independently, of course. Open the points and shove the pannier inside to pick up the rest of the wagons. And you could do this all day, <laughs> seriously, it's so much fun. Okay, there we go, send the 2721 out the way now, that's got the full train, that's mission complete. And now the two engines can run independently around the track and I could probably uncouple from the 2721 and give it to the 08 if I wanted to. <laughs> you can try and get it so that both locos don't catch each other but they don't stop either, that's something I used to like doing. So you try and match the speeds and see if you can't get them to run harmoniously. Yeah, it's a lot of fun and it works incredibly well. And of course DCC is very versatile, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this controller now into my main layout. I'm going to connect the outer and middle lines together so that the controller controls both. And I can get both engines running independently on different tracks using the same controller. DCC is that flexible. So let's do that, shall we? Okay, so we're down onto the main layout. The controller is all wired up, I think. Not tried it yet, but we'll see. And the locos are on the separate tracks, but connected by crocodile clips and ready to go. 
I've also added more rolling stock. The 08 has got some tankers, as you can see, and the pannier. When it pulls forward, you will see I've fitted with a brake van. So you can add lots of rolling stock like that if you want to. For now, though, let's get the 08 started first. So I'll punch in the 08 number into the controller. I want it to go forwards because I've coupled to it the correct way. And if I knock it up to about half speed, there it goes. Oops. Oh, didn't like the express point, did it? <laughs> Slow it down a bit to get to a, an appropriate speed. I can leave that going and then select the 2.7. There we go. As you notice, it doesn't start, even though the speed is set up. I have to go back down to zero and then I can control it. I want this one to go forwards as well and give it some juice. Oh, direction set wrong on that one. OK, so set it backwards and then give that some juice. And there we have two locos running, sort of, except when they get to the express points. Yeah, that's the only problem, not reliable on points. But as you can see, they're both going as they should be. This has to be the most fun train set I've ever come across. You can just do so much with it, thanks to the fact that the two locos are independent. It's really, really cool. So here are my ratings then for the mixed traffic train set from Hornby, which is an awful lot of fun, it must be said. The level of detail, I was going to give just two stars for the locos because obviously I think we can all agree they were quite basic. But because of the decoration on the wagons, which I was not expecting for a sort of railroad-esque train set, because the decoration was so good, I've decided to add an extra star and knock it up to three because that was quite impressive. The performance, I've given four stars. The performance, generally speaking, wasn't too bad, and I might have even been close to give it five if it was on the 08 alone. Overall, they do a great slow crawl, which is quite impressive, and they're very smooth runners. Unfortunately, they are a little bit noisy, particularly at the higher speeds, and they do tend to cut out, particularly that pannier tank. The pickups don't seem to be all that reliable, although, of course, you can adjust them and improve them very slightly if you decide to. The pulling power from each loco is not very much, each one's only able to haul around 13 coaches on straight and level track and of course in practical circumstances where the track is not straight and level they won't be able to manage even anywhere close to that so they're not very powerful unfortunately however they're fine for the purpose of the train set of course. The mechanism I've given four star, generally the mechanism is really, really impressive. Obviously they're DCC fitted, so they have sockets in them, which is really good. They have proper bearings on the wheel set, which is really good for a cheaper loco. They have all wheel pickup. The only problem with them really is that they have three pole motor and not five poles. And for that, I have knocked off one star. Quality then, I've given four star. Generally the quality is really, really good. The track is high quality. We've got nickel silver, good fish plates that hug together really, really nicely. Everything's assembled perfectly. There's no defects on the Locos rolling stock or anything like that. The rolling stock has metal wheels, which is really, really good. The only things I'd really criticize is the lack of NEM couplings. That's not so great. The, they're a bit old and crusty, the ones on there. And the other thing is that the Locos are quite plasticky where the bodies are concerned. Generally speaking, though, the quality is very, very good. Now, value for money then, as I say, the cheapest you can get all of this for if you buy it separately is around £260, which makes the RRP of £210, or the retailer price of £189, incredibly reasonable. If you want everything that's in this set, you'd be crazy not to pick it up, wouldn't you? So I think the value for money is really, really good. Overall then, that is 7.53 out of 10. Of course, that score says nothing about the play value with this set, which I think is absolutely immense. So yeah, it's a generally a very good score. Into the logbook it goes then. There we go, eighth just above the Drummond 700 class and below the Hornby Ruston. Generally, I can highly recommend this one. If it's for you, then yeah, go for it. And I've got a link in the description, affiliate link, if you want to check that out. Yeah, very, very impressive stuff. So it really is a great train set, I've got to say it's so much fun. The biggest problem for me is that the locos, as you can see, are quite unreliable where the points are concerned. It is annoying and there's no good reason for it because they have all wheel pickup and they have quite large wheel bases. It just seems the pickups are quite unreliable. But if I wasn't going to be sending them back to Hornby, I could open them up and adjust the pickups and probably fix the issue. So that's definitely something you could do if you were facing a similar problem. But besides that, yeah, it's fine. It's great. It works well. And to be honest, they weren't stopping so much on the points that came with the train set, which is interesting. 
but it's certainly worse on my layout where the express points are. It certainly isn't on every point though, as you can see, which is pretty reassuring. So there you have it then folks, the Hornby Mixed Traffic Digital Train Set. I absolutely love that. I think two locos in a train set is something I'd love to see more of. Let me know, is DCC something that you're interested in using or not? I'd be interested to hear from you guys on that. For now though, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that as always, and I will see you very, very soon with some more videos. Cheers everybody.